In the past year or so, you've likely heard the term UN reform, maybe as often as you've heard SDGs, NCDs, or UHC. This is the most ambitious reform of the United Nations development system in decades. But what exactly does this mean? UN reform is simply put, organizational restructuring, intended to make the UN more transparent. It's also about making the system less bureaucratic so more can get done in a better and faster way. First, let's back up a bit. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres started his term three years ago with a clear directive from the General Assembly to take on a UN makeover. The UN was constructed following World War II, but since then, the world itself has changed dramatically, and many parts of the global body have been slow to keep up with the changing times. There was clear consensus between member states and UN leadership that the system needed to be reworked in order to reduce redundancy across UN agencies and to better position the organization to achieve the far-reaching 2030 development agenda. Guterres indicated that he was ready to take on the long-standing challenge and began rolling out policy proposals shortly after he took office. He explained that the goals were simple. There was a need to focus more on people, less on process, more on results, less on bureaucracy, and more on moving away from business as usual. It's been said by Guterres' team that there really is only one UN, so there can be only one reform. In practice, though, the picture appears much more complicated, as UN reform technically extends into the three broad pillars of the UN's work, peacekeeping, development, and management systems. This includes a plan for a new funding compact, as the UN continues to face a serious cash flow problem. Some changes are already visible. Gender parity, for example, is considered a fundamental part of any change that happens at the UN, and Guterres has achieved equality at the most senior levels. Achieving parity across the entire system, though, is still a work in progress. While women make up the majority of entry-level UN staffers, once they reach middle management, the participation dropped to as low as 33% at the end of 2018, UN figures show. Last January, Guterres rolled out a big change to the way work is done within UN agency country teams. About a thousand new people have since been hired to support what are known as resident coordinator positions. In the past, resident coordinators served as UNDP country heads. But under the new system, RCs are independent of any one UN agency and report to the Deputy Secretary General, theoretically allowing them to focus just on UN country team coordination, working to reduce duplication in the UN's work, but without the risk of any bias to a particular agency. These changes are expected to cost $281 million each year, or roughly 1% of the contributions that go to UN development work. So, you might ask, how are these changes actually going? To a large extent, it is too soon to say. Some of the resident coordinator posts were only filled within the last six months. The funding compact is yet to be established, and it will take time to understand how these changes, once in place, are actually helping bring the sustainable development goals closer within reach. This reform is ultimately about changing a workplace culture, which can take time to take effect, according to experts we've spoken to. This year, the UN will celebrate its 75th anniversary with a series of talks about the organization's future. One thing is clear. Change is hard, but for the sake of the UN's existence, it is likely necessary.